God bless you. I did not think I would be recording a video tonight. It's past my bedtime already. Uh, but I was <laughs> watching a movie and contemplating a conversation I had with one of you today. And this person had done something that they regretted. And they probably felt that they were outside God's will. And I felt Holy Spirit saying, God wants you to sanctify yourself. And their thoughts went straight to fasting. And God said, no, that, that is not what I want from you. What I want is for you to get back to seeing yourself as that little girl. That little girl who needs my love, who needs my covering, who needs to be able to come back to my arms and feel safe and protected. In this case, God wasn't saying that sanctif sanctification comes through works, fasting, prayer. He was saying that sanctification comes through our understanding of our identity in Christ. God is saying that we need to feel good enough. We need to put ourselves out of arm's reach of the enemy, put ourselves far enough out of the enemy's reach that we don't feel convicted, that we don't feel condemned, that our thoughts immediately go to our protector, our provider, our heavenly father, and our saviour and what they mean to us. We need to remember that we are forgiven when we feel that we have fallen short. We need to remember that we are forgiven. When we get stuck in guilt and shame and feel that we are not good enough to approach our Father, not good enough to represent our Father, we tend to isolate ourselves in different ways and in different extents because we need forgiveness. It's important that we be able to reach out and touch Jesus' garment and receive that grace from him because God can't use us when we are self-isolating. And when we sit in guilt and shame, we give power to the enemy. We come into agreement with the enemy when the accuser points the finger at us and we say, yes, I'm, I'm guilty, I'm wrong, I'm shameful. It's like we're in a stalemate with the enemy and he keeps us trapped and it's very difficult for God to use us in that state. God turned my thoughts to a parenting philosophy or idea called circle of security. I've raised this before many years, many years ago, several years ago uh, within this ministry. I'm not sure how many of you recall that. I don't know how many of you have come across this in your um, parenting journey or a caring journey. Um, and I'm going to share a bit about this and then I will explain the relevance to, to God's message. The circle of security is the idea that we as the parent create a secure base for children, but they also need us to give them space to explore. And of course, as children take risks and explore, 
they're learning about themselves, other people, the world. Really, all healthy relationships should have a circle of security where we are the other person's safe place for self-regulation. But then we're also able to be apart from the other person in a, in a marital relationship. You know, you come together in the evening, you debrief, you share about your day. But during the day, usually you work apart and you need to be comfortable releasing each other to have the adventures of the day. God took me to Matthew 14, the story of Peter <laughs> walking on the water. I'm going to read this and you will understand the context as we go, the relevance. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. In a circle of security, we provide the secure base. In the God model, God provides us with the secure base. In the natural context, we, we as the parent or carer are the secure base for the child. When the child is feeling confident and their emotional cup is full and they're self-regulated emotionally, they head out to explore. As a child who's just beginning to walk, this might just be a couple of steps towards the coffee table. And as they head out, their need is for support in their exploration. They need to know that that bigger, more powerful person with that higher perspective is watching over them and propping them up as they explore. As they get confident, or as they partake in activities that they are um, competent at, their need is for that, that bigger person to watch over them, delight in them, to help them, and to enjoy their activities with them. At some point, invariably, children need their basic needs met again. They might need a nappy change, they might need support going to the toilet, they might be hungry or tired or exhausted and then they start to return to their secure base. I need you, I need, I need the bigger person to welcome me. I need them to notice that I'm returning. I need them to, to acknowledge that I'm coming back. And as they approach and they get close to that safe haven, they feel more acutely those needs. They might become more dysregulated. I need that bigger person to protect me, comfort me, delight in me and to help me organise my feelings. Jesus encouraged Peter to take that risk, to step out on the water. 
But when the storm brewed up and things started to look out of control, Peter became dysregulated, he became fearful, and he came back to Jesus crying out, I need you, I need you to protect me, I need you to comfort me, I need you to organise my feelings. One of the circle of security teachings is that that bigger person is to always be bigger, stronger, wiser and kind. Whenever possible to follow the child's need and whenever necessary to take charge. I think most of us could have a look at God's role in our lives and agree that he always is that bigger, stronger wiser, kind person we need, who follows our needs, he meets our needs, he props us up and supports us, he encourages us and he delights in us and whenever necessary he does take charge. Healthy attachment is critical to successful relationships and it begins in childhood. Our brain is wired. You've heard me speak about this on numerous occasions that the left eye contact of the mother to the left eye of the infant while breastfeeding and then later through just socialisation wires up that child's brain very rapidly in those first three years and then after the first three years that role of wiring the brain through interaction alternates between mother and father. The Circle of Security website, I just need to make sure I quote it properly for you, circleofsecurityinternational.com teaches that the father of attachment theory, John Bowlby, said this about attachment. Intimate attachments to other human beings are the hub around which a person's life revolves. Not only as an infant or a toddler or a school child, but throughout adolescence and years of maturity as well and on into old age. From these intimate attachments, a person draws strength and enjoyment of life and through what he contributes, gives strength and enjoyment to others. These are matters about which current science and traditional wisdom are at one. Bowlby, John Bowlby, 1980, from Attachment and Loss, Volume 1, Attachment, Basic Books, New York. All right. This teaching reminds me of the Maslow's hierarchy teaching that God had me give some years back. Because at the end of the day, the ultimate should be the starting point, and that is relationship with God. Just as with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the worldly view is that we build on the basics of safety, security, um, food, water, shelter. And ultimately, if those layers by layers of needs are met, we experience self-actualization which usually is associated with spiritual enlightenment and freedom to contribute to our world if we put the relationship with god first and that self-actualization that relationship with god first the rest tends to follow and this is, this is similar in that if we get our relationship with God first, get, get that right first, we, um, that has a positive impact on our whole nervous system, our ability to self-regulate, our ability to make sensible decisions and the right decisions and our ability to show up for others and our ability to contribute socially.
The website I referred to has a list of founding principles. Attachment problems in infancy and early childhood increase the probability of psychopathology later on in life. Secure attachment is very, very protective in many, many ways. Secure attachment relationships with caregivers are a protective factor for infants and preschoolers, setting the foundation for social competence and promoting effective functioning of the emotional regulation and stress response systems. Exactly what I was just talking about. This applies to us as adults in our relationship with God. The quality of the attachment relationship is amenable to change. It's very easy to disrupt our attachment with somebody else and with God. We tend to be the ones who separate ourselves from God, not because he puts up a boundary, but because we start to believe that we're not good enough. We start to believe that we are somehow tainted and not worthy. And God says that could not be further from the truth. Yes, we, we know that nobody's perfect, but through the blood of the Lamb, we are good enough. And God says we are chosen. He chose us to be his children. Founding principle four, learning, including therapeutic change, occurs from within a secure base relationship. When we have that secure relationship with God, where we know that it doesn't matter what we do, he will have us back. He will welcome us back with open arms. We can grow. We can learn from our mistakes and grow and look towards the future, be future focused. Founding principle six is all caregivers want what is best for their children and you know God just wants what's best for us and it's why it's important for us to understand in times the seasons like we've just been through prior to Rosh Hashanah where there's been a lot of stripping away that it's because God has a plan for us and the new that he has for us is so much better so much better and when we have a secure relationship with God, we can understand that and we can trust him. There are a range of teachings in theology. And I've marveled this week at how we can have a broad spectrum from fire and brimstone teachings where the congregation is made to feel that they are never good enough or theologies that teach that only one person can hear from God nobody else is sanctified enough to hear from God to the other end of the spectrum where we believe that anything that feels uncomfortable couldn't possibly be from God and that teaching is straight from hell <laughs> it's straight from hell. It makes us complacent and it makes us battle God when he's trying to usher in something new. The reality is that God can be all of those things. In a context of circle of security, God is our safe haven, he's our safe harbour. He will support us as we head out and explore. As we start a new season, he starts to share his perspective with us and to encourage us to step out in faith, take those risks and trust that he's there ready to catch us if we fall. He's there to delight in us. 
as we settle into that new season and start to feel confident and competent in the place he's put us around the people. He has us around doing the things he's asked us to do. And when it all starts to feel too much or we feel like we've made a mistake, we can go back to him and trust that he's welcoming us back with open arms, that nothing that we can do is so terrible that God would not lovingly welcome us back. And while we're sitting on his knee, he might give us some instruction. He might gently explain to us where we went wrong. But he will protect us. He will comfort us. He will delight in us. And he will help us to organise our feelings. So remember that in this season, when God says sanctify yourself, really he's saying trust in me, have faith, be obedient, see me as your provider, see me as your safe haven, your covering, your protection, see me as your support team, see me as your cheerleader, and when things start to look a bit scary or when you feel like you might have done something wrong, God wants you to be able to go back to him. Go back to him. Grieve whatever needs grieving. Express your regret to God. But above all, let him be your father in this season. Holy Father, I thank you for putting this video before those who need to receive it. A prophetic word is not a guarantee of future events. Take every word before the Lord for confirmation. God bless you.